this picture, which hasn't been seen since 1865, is a portrait of James Bamford. Maybe it looks very ordinary to you, but Brown wrote of it. That this is the first evidence of an entirely new direction of thought and feeling on my part. He'd seen Holbein and was very impressed by that unflinching realism, and I think that's reflected in this portrait. Uh, this picture of the Seraph's Watch, which is a, redis a rediscovery, it just turned up, luckily, uh, two or three years ago. Uh, we all thought it was a lost. Um, the Seraph's Watch, which was painted immediately on return from Rome, and he also retitled it when it was exhibited, uh, A Reminiscence of the Early Masters. You see the blue that you get in, in, in the Italian frescoes and the generally pale coloration. Uh, it may not be the greatest work of art that he produced, but it is a tremendously interesting. Unlike a lot of the pictures, like this one for instance, this is, was never retouched or recoloured or fiddled around with. It's absolutely pristine. Uh, and then we have a series of pictures about the origins of English literature. Uh, this one is Wycliffe. Uh, this is slightly dirty now, unfortunately, because it was originally, I'm sure, much, much more vibe. Well, no, originally it was described as fresco-like, so it's probably quite pale, but Brown did colour it up to heighten it. But to me, this, this is a reminiscent, the, 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 to me, the, uh, an, this is an altarpiece. This is a secular altarpiece with Wycliffe, who's the great theologian, reading from the Bible. But it's not a, it's, it's not a religious subject in the sense of a biblical subject. Uh, he chose Wycliffe as he chose Chaucer because they created English literature. They were the first people to write in English uh, uh, the translation of the Bible that Wycliffe did, which predated the uh, by centuries the King James Version uh, and also Tyndale's and uh, Chaucer.